Good evening. <clears throat> as we start tonight's broadcast, I'd like to start welcoming everybody as they're busy linking in. And uh, we're preparing our hearts for a great time to be able to just share God's word and just be able to get into his word tonight. And once again, allow that word to illuminate our hearts and souls and bring life into us as we move forward in the things of the Lord. What an awesome privilege and honor it is to be able to develop a relationship with the Almighty God and be able to allow Him to infuse us with His very being, with through His Holy Spirit, to come and live and dwell inside of us, to allow us to experience Him working not only in our lives to the benefit of our lives, but also working in our lives, through our lives, to affect other people. So, what an awesome privilege. So tonight, I want you, as you're busy signing on, to prepare your hearts and get ready for an awesome time as we go in and we just spend this time with the Lord. But before we do that, let's just do a little bit of a housekeeping quickly, a little bit of advertising break here. Um, I need to just advise the people that tonight at eight o'clock, we'll be doing a uh, live prayer meeting. Um, it's going to be broadcast via Zoom onto um, the Facebook page. So if you want to participate and be part of that tonight, please come along at eight. We are doing it every night this week at eight o'clock because I'm pretty sure you all know what is going on in our nation right now about the unrests and the, all the, 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 the upheavals and the problems that have been incurring and happening and the violence as a result of that. And we feel that God is just laying on our hearts to pray into that. So we're going to start tonight. We're calling it an emergency prayer meeting. And we're going to go every night this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday night at 8 o'clock as, as the Lord leads. So we'll be doing it on, on Zoom and there'll be a whole lot of participants that will be praying. But then we're going to push that onto Facebook Live and you'll be able to participate and become part of that. What we've also done today is we've launched a new website called apraying.sa.co.za. A for at praying, S-A, all one word, .co.za. You'll find it on the Facebook page. If you go there and you look at it, you'll see it's there and you'll be able to get that information off that Facebook page and be able to participate. Now on that Facebook page, what we've done for the rest of the month, we've allocated and provided days. And in those days, there's our slots where you can go and put your name in to, or click on it and say, I'm available in this hour and I'm going to pray during this time. You can select multiple hours across multiple days. And then what it will do is it'll send you confirmation of which days you are going to be praying into. And then we're trying to fill the whole thing. And since this site has gone live, we've already started advertising it on the WhatsApp groups and the Telegram groups. So people have already gone in and, and occupied hours. It is vital and it's critical that we press through and touch God in this particular situation and in this hour. We need to find God's heart. We need to speak and pray God's will into this situation. And we have to take the authority that God has given us. You know, there's a spirit of fear that's trying to attach itself to people in general of any race group as the, as the, as the things are happening and unfolding in the nation. But tonight we're trusting God to see his hand move this week especially. We also understand and know that at 8 o'clock the president will be making an announcement addressing the nation. We're not going to hold the 8 o'clock prayer back because of that or postpone it forward. We're actually going to start praying at 8 o'clock. So we'll catch up with the president after the prayer meeting and uh, we'll, there will be many recordings that will be published on the internet, on the various feeds and stuff like that, that we can get hold of. I'm pretty sure they'll be repeating what he said on the news as well. So, so we'll catch up with that afterwards. So I want to encourage you tonight. If you are available from 8 o'clock, join us, pray with us. Go to the aprayingsa.co.za website. Go and register yourself, put yourself in. And uh, we are trusting God for His hand to move upon our nation. And we believe in God for miraculous powers that, that uh, will be released as we trust Him for many things. So I think those are the only announcements I have to make for the evening right now. So uh, let's just have a look-see. Uh, I've got some of the, the WhatsApp feeds running here. So, uh, um, right, okay, there's nothing special there. So let, let's get into the word tonight. I've got a word that I believe God has given me for this particular evening and for this particular time that we are finding ourselves in. And I've called the word or the title for tonight, I've called it Blessings of Obedience. Okay, so it's the blessings that God bestows upon his people for being obedient to his instruction and his word that he has given unto us. This whole thing started when I was busy teaching a little while ago and, uh, and it was sometime last year. 
And uh, I was busy ministering to a group of people. And one of the questions that came up in the discussion time was, how, does, how did Jesus perform miracles? If he only died, that he, he hadn't gone to the cross yet. We do everything we do as a result of what happened on the cross. So everything we do, we do because Jesus paid a price. And through his sacrifice upon the cross and through his name, we are able to do many of the of the, the things that we are able to do. Praying for the sick, seeing them healed, um, all this kind of stuff that happens because of being obedient to God's word or doing what the word instructs us. So when I was busy studying this and looking into this, I, I wanted to get clarity in my heart and mind as to exactly how did the Old Testament prophets and the men of God in the Old Testament, how were they able to do the miracles they did? And at the same time, how did Jesus do the miracles before he actually went to the cross? And we know that Jesus makes a, makes a statement. I'll, I'll read this to you quickly. In uh, John chapter 5 and verse um, 19, Jesus replied and said to the people, He said, Truly I tell you, the Son is not able to do anything on His own, but only what He sees the Father doing. Very familiar scripture. Many of us will, will recognize that. For whatever the Father does, the Son likewise does these things. Also in John chapter 8 and verse 28, So Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he and that he, that I do nothing of my own. But just as the father taught me, I say these things. So we know and understand that Jesus made a statement. He said, I do nothing unless I see the father do it. I say nothing unless I hear the father say it. So for Jesus before the cross, he did everything based on instruction from his father. So he's he stepped out in obedience to what he was told. Because if it wasn't told to him, if it wasn't said to him, he would not say it, he would not do it, and he will not act on it at all. And therefore, it was everything he did was um, motivated and originated from the throne room of God, from the Father himself. And by that instruction, Jesus performed the miracles that he did through obedience to the Spirit of God, through obedience to what he heard, and then in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it, it's got this to say it for itself. He did it through the Holy Spirit itself. God could not operate as God because then he could do, sorry. He did everything through the Holy Spirit himself. Now, I want to just add this to this, to the saying here, that God, Jesus could not do anything that he did here on earth as God. Although he was 100% God, and although he came down in his divinity, he could not do it out of that position or out of that place. He had to do it as a man because he had to show us that we could also do it. Because in John chapter 14 verse 12, it says, The works that Jesus did, we will do also, and even greater works would we do. Now, how would that be even possible if Jesus did these miracles. And now he says in John 14 that we can also do it in even greater miracles and greater things. Now we can debate what those things are. I know some people, you know, some people interpret it as not necessarily being miracles, but having a further outreach beyond just the, the Middle East, um, all kinds of stuff. But for now, let's just accept the fact that we can do greater things. All right. So the thing, whatever Jesus did, we could do more, greater and because of that, we, we know that in our own strength, and our own ability, that's not possible. But we do know that through the Holy Spirit, we can do that. And Jesus himself in Acts 10, 38, it confirms that he did everything that he did through the Holy Spirit. And because he did it through the Holy Spirit, you and I do it through the Holy Spirit as well. We have the confirmation that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, that he comes and lives big inside of us. Once we accept Christ into our hearts and lives, and because of that, we endued with power from an eye. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. We receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. And when we receive that, we now have this ability to go forward and do the things that Jesus did. But how is that possible then if Jesus didn't have all that? But we know that Jesus got baptized with the Spirit 
when he went and got baptized by John the Baptist. We understand that because the father affirmed him at that time and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And then we know the story about how the, the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. And, and he, was, he then went into the wilderness and got ready for his earthly ministry. And we understand that whole principle that Jesus also received the Holy Spirit. So he was all God, all man. But when he performed miracles, he could not do it as God because then he would not set an example for you and I as to what we could go out and do. All right. And what we are capable of doing. So we understand then that there's a principle in God's word then that we have to hear and be obedient to what we hear to allow to release the Holy Spirit to do the work if we're going to follow the example that Jesus set. So I believe that in the Old Testament, the same principle was applied because Noah, all the guys, Moses, every single one of them that you look at, you'll see that they were given instructions by God. And when they acted and started doing those instructions, they were empowered by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit would then do the works that needed to be done. And that is how they were able to perform the miracles, even in the Old Testament. So here's the pattern for you and I then, that we have to hear what the Lord is saying, what the Father is saying. And when we hear that and we act on it, we can have a confidence that the Holy Spirit will go before us and fulfill the work and the word that has been spoken. Because it's God inspired, it's God breathed and God brought into our lives. So I have for the last nearly a year now. I have made it a vital thing in my walk with Christ that I want to do only what I know the Father has said. So I've got two examples before me. One is the actual spoken word of God. We know what the Bible says, what the Bible instructs. And therefore, I can, I can get into that and I can work in that. And because I work in that, I can see the hand of God move in my life. And I, will, I can expect him to fulfill his word and to perform his word in my life. The same time, I also have the spoken word of God, that small, still voice, that voice that speaks into my spirit. It says, Les, I need you to go here. Les, I need you to do this. Les, please hold back. Les, go forward. Whatever the case may be, whatever that instruction is, go and give this to somebody. Go and visit that person or provide a blessing or financial need over here. Whatever it may be, that is when we are obedient to the voice that we hear God speaking to us in whichever way he's going to get that through to you and I. So through that, then we have to understand that obedience forms the heart of our faith walk. It is the foundation of our faith walk. So if we don't prepare, or if we are, sorry, let me phrase it this way. If we are not prepared to be obedient to the instruction of the word of God and what he is speaking to us, either through the written word, word or through that small, still voice into our spirit. If we're not prepared to be obedient to that, we will also not see the fulfilling of that miracle working power in our lives. As we are obedient to it, I believe that you and I will see that word perform and that word come to, to fruition in our lives. How do I know that? There's three scriptures, basically. Just Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. It says the study the book of instructions continually, referring to the Bible. Meditate on it day and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Okay, so therefore there's an instruction already in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, that we need to meditate on God's word day and night. And as we do that continuously, we must make sure that we obey everything that is written in it. And only then will you, will you prosper and succeed in all you do. There's the blessing already being exposed to us because as we are obedient to the word of God, that which he speaks to us. So we must become a doer of that word so we can be assured that we'll prosper and succeed in all that we do. Then we also find in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse one, it says, now if you faithfully obey the Lord, your God and are call careful to follow all his commands, I'm giving you today, the Lord your God will put you far above all the nations of the earth. All these blessings will overcome and overtake you because you obey the Lord your God. Obedience and with it comes blessings, 
comes a reward. There's an expectation then that he is faithful and just to perform his word. And therefore, when you're obedient to him, there is a blessing attached to that obedience. He blesses us because we listen to him and we obey. In Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 9 through 10 says this, The Lord your God will make you prosper abundantly, not just even a little bit, abundantly in all the work of your hands. So whatever your hands touch, confirmation of Psalm chapter 1 and verse 3, whatever your hands touch, that your offspring, the offspring of your livestock and the produce of your land. So in other words, everything, whatever your family, your things, the things that you touch, the things that you're working on, all these things, they will uh, prosper abundantly. And then it carries on to say, indeed, the Lord will again delight in your prosperity as he delighted in that of your ancestors. So God delights in you and my prosperity. John chapter 15, verse 8, my father is glorified by me bearing forth much fruit. So therefore, with, his, with our obedience to him comes the blessing of the Lord. And then it carries on. And when you obey the Lord your God, keeping his commandments and statute, that all that that are all the things that are written in this book of law, and return to him with all your heart and all your soul. So therefore, God expects us to be obedient to what we read and hear in this word. As we are obedient to the instruction of the word of God, so we can expect the blessing of the Lord to come upon our lives. Obedience is not something. That is, you know, this this scripture. I just can't remember the exact reference that says it's be, obedience is better than sacrifice. And we as believers have looked at those verses, and when we see the word sacrifice, we think that the alternative or the opposite to obedience is that you need to sacrifice, you need to give up something, you need to pay a price, and therefore we we, we sort of got a negative connotation to this whole obedience thing. All right, but here the Bible is making it very clear to us. That is, obedience does not have a sacrifice attached to it. All right. Although it's better to be obedient because if you do, you're not obedient, you will suffer the consequences, obviously. But when you're obedient, the, there's a blessing that comes with it. And there's a pleasure that comes with it. And there's an enjoyment that comes with it. That's why we count it all joy when we come into diverse temptations, trials and tribulations, James 1 says. And when we do that, we in, make a decision to accept Christ into your hearts and to enjoy him fully in absolutely everything that we do. Now, obedience is not a test designed to see if we are committed to God. Listen to me. Obedience is not a test designed to see if we are committed to God. That's not what obedience is. All right. Obedience to God unlocks his best for us and answers his will. And sorry, let me say that again. Obedience to God unlocks his unlocks his best for us and, uh, and in, sorry, ensures, I can't even read my own handwriting, ensures his will is done on this earth. Read again. Obedience to God unlocks his best for us and ensures his will is done on this earth earth all right so we then through our obedience we come to a place that we ensure that god's best is unlocked obedience is therefore critical in our lives and all obedience is if i had to define it obedience is doing anything god commands you and i put after that in capital letters full stop because i've seen other people define obedience where they say at any cost at any this, at any whatever, and they add a tail end to it. To me, there is no tail end to it. Obedience is just doing anything God commands. Full stop. All right. So if God says this, I do it. And I am a quick about doing it because there's a blessing attached to it that will count and accumulate to my life and not only to my life, but also to my destiny and my purpose. All right. These are things that you and I need to understand about obedience but now let me quickly give you a couple of scriptures i don't want to go too long tonight because we've got this prayer meeting at eight o'clock just now but let me read you a couple of scriptures quickly in isaiah chapter 1 and verse 19 it says this if you are willing and obedient you will eat the good of the land very popular scripture you should know that if you are willing and obedient listen to that word obedience you will eat the good of things of the land. All right. 
Also in Psalm 128 and verse 1 it says, Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to Him. Look at the first verse. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to Him. Blessing and obedience. We need to understand that there is a blessing attached to being obedient to the Word of God. So therefore we understand that our obedience demonstrates our love for Jesus. John chapter 14 and verse 15 says, If you love me, you will obey what I command. That's what Jesus said. If you love me, you will obey what I command. It demonstrates your love for Jesus. Your obedience to his instruction, your obedience to his word, your obedience to his written word as well as his spoken word demonstrates your love for him. A little bit further on in that same chapter in verse 23, John chapter 14, verse 23, it says, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. So you need to understand that you and I, through our obedience, we show forth our love and demonstrate how we feel about God, His Word, and the things of His Word. Now, as I start bringing this thing to a land, let's quickly go to Luke, uh, so yeah, um, Luke chapter um, 5, Luke chapter 5, and verse 1 through 11. And I want us to read this. It says, As the crowd was pressing in on Jesus to hear God's word, he was, saying, he was standing by the lake of Galilee. He saw two boats at the edge of the lake. The fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats which belonged to Simon and asked him to put out a little from the land. Then he sat down and was teaching the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Master, Simon replied, We've worked hard all night long and caught nothing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down. When, he did, when they did this, they caught a great number of fish. And the nets began to tear. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me because I'm a sinful man, Lord. For he and all those who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, Zebedee's sons, who were with Simon's partners. Don't be afraid, Jesus told Simon. From now on, you'll be catching people. Then they brought the boats to land, let everything, left everything and followed him. Well-known passage of scripture once again. But I want to just highlight one or two or three things in this, this um, story about these Simon Peter and the fishing and Jesus commanding them all that. I want you to focus on the obedience aspect within this particular passage of scripture. You'll see the first thing that happened here is that Jesus got the boat, he ministered to the people, he preached. After he was finished, he turned around and he said to Simon, Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for catch. That is an instructional command from Jesus to Simon, saying, listen, do this. Now Simon has a choice. Remember, he's the professional, he's a fisherman, he knows the story, all right? And he's been fishing all night and he's tired and he's not really up to any of this. But he says, Master, Simon replied, we've worked hard all night long and caught nothing. But if you say so, I'll let down the nets. So Simon ignored his feelings. Simon ignored his intellect and his understanding. Simon did not enter into a discussion with Jesus or an argument with Jesus. Although he did air his concerns and said, listen, hey, I've been doing this all night and there's no fish. You know, and he's like, maybe gave Jesus the look, but who knows? But he said, nevertheless, because you saying it, I'm doing it. Obedient to the word of Jesus. Look at the result. So as a result of that obedience that some put out, when they did this, verse 6, they caught a great number of fish and their nets began to tear. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and fought the boats, both boats, so full that they began to sink. Let's look at verse 6 and 7 quickly. 
In verse 6, we say that, see that through the obedience, remember this word tonight is blessing of obedience. Because of his obedience to the instruction that Jesus gave, he received the blessing, a multitude of fish so big that he himself could not even deal with it or handle it. All right. So I want to tell you this tonight, that as you're watching this broadcast and you're watching me tonight, that if you are obedient to the word of God, you can expect an increase in the multiplication into your life and abundance as we saw in Deuteronomy that will come into your life because of obedience. All right. But here is a side issue. The first thing I want you to look at is that there is a everybody around him, around Simon, benefited from his obedience. So two boats were filled with the fish. All their families were fed. Everybody was looked after. And I'm sure there was even more for others. The same thing with a blessing upon your life. Your family, your immediate family, your wife, your children, your parents, your nieces, nephews, etc. Will be in direct line to receive from your benefits or blessings that you've received from the obedience to God's word. So other people will participate in that which comes upon your life because of your obedience and what you've done in response to God's word. When we obey God's word, irrespective of what we feel, think or might consider about it, we will never regret our decision. Number three, we will never regret or be disappointed in our decision. Our decision will bear forth the fruit that God has promised through his word. So I want to encourage you tonight. I'm going to start rounding it off and finishing it off there. I want to encourage you tonight because we are in desperate situations in this world right now. It is critical that we open our spiritual ears to hear what the Spirit says, what God says. And that we obey that instruction. Because in James chapter 2, the Bible also tells me, my faith is perfected by, my, by what I do and how I respond to the Word of God. My faith is perfected by it. It's made complete. It's made whole. Because when I act upon that instruction that I have received from God, I can expect the, the power and the forces and authority of heaven to come in behind that word, to see the word fulfilled for not only my benefit, but for the benefit of God's kingdom. Because everything God does is to build his kingdom. That might surprise you. It's not all about you. It's not all about me. It's about God's kingdom. It's about the people of God, the body of Christ. We are driving towards a point in time where he's going to come. And he's going to catch his church away. You've been hearing about that on, on Friday nights. So we are expect, we've got an expectation to see the word of God fulfilled in these last days. We're expecting a, a, a refreshing, a renewing, a revival of God's presence, purpose and word amongst us in ways that you cannot even dream or think possible. Because God is busy preparing his bride and bringing her to a place of perfection. And as he, do, as he does that, you and I are included. So in these last hours of this dispensation of time, we have to come to a place where we start hearing God extremely clear and that we act upon it immediately without hesitation to fulfill the word of God, not only in our own lives, but and for the lives of others, to see the advancement of the kingdom of God and to see the fulfillment of his promises in our lives. So I want to encourage you tonight. Do not hold back. When you feel God is speaking to you or instructing you, act. Act upon the word that you're sensing in your heart and spirit. Be obedient to the written word. Be obedient to his spoken word into your life. And when you do that, you're going to see the fulfillment of God's power and might in your life. Let's just wrap this thing up with a prayer tonight. Father, we just thank you. Lord, as we have now gone through your word, that, Lord, your word will not return void, but it will accomplish that which is sent out to do. 
I also thank you tonight that this word has fallen on fertile ground, that the hearts that have received will not reject it or allow it to go shipwrecked. But Father God, it will be mature, strong, and it will reduce the 30, the 60, and the 100 fold. And Father, it will refresh your people and refresh everybody else that comes into contact with your people. Father God, because you said it, because you declared it. So Father, tonight I thank you that the faith within your people have risen to believe you for the impossible, to be obedient to your instruction. It might be something small that releases something big. We don't know. But through our small obedience, we can see a mighty move and a mighty uh, fulfillment of God's word and promises. So Father, I now release all these people into your hands. I ask you to keep them, Father God, and keep them safe, especially in these days and times that we find ourselves right now. And Father God, I thank you that you prosper and you grow them in Jesus' name. Amen.